What's going on guys? Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill that was recently signed by US President Joe Biden on Monday, November the 15th. Most importantly, we're going to touch on three key points. First, what is included on this bill? Second, how this bill relates to crypto? And third, how will this affect you if you have any money invested in crypto? Stay tuned because this is going to be a good one. The infrastructure package was signed into law on Monday, November the 15th by US President Joe Biden. The main purpose is to build and repair roads, bridges, ports, railroads. According to this Ernst & Young report, $110 billion is going to be invested in roads and bridges, um, $66 billion on railways, and $7.5 billion on electric vehicles. And more specifically, to build a nationwide network of charging stations for electric vehicles to help accelerate the adoption of non-fossil fuel cars. Also, $21 billion will be dedicated for environmental remediation to address past pollution that harms public health. Now, this investment is something that will help America tremendously, and it's something that it needs. But 22% of the entire USD in circulation was printed in 2020. This means that if the US wants to control inflation, it is not a good idea to keep printing money. Feel free to check out my video on inflation. Now, Democrats claim that the legislation pays for itself through a multitude of measures and without raising taxes. The drafters of the infrastructure bill were looking for ways to cover this $1.2 trillion expense. And they found cryptocurrencies, and this is how the bill affects cryptos. The IRS has historically treated cryptocurrency and other digital assets as property, applying general property tax transaction principles. Now, they claim that the appropriate taxes have not been paid by holders of cryptocurrencies in a substantial number of transactions. The Senate is aiming to bring transparency to the market while also giving taxpayers greater certainty to their taxable gains and losses related to the transaction of cryptocurrency assets. As part of this new infrastructure bill, there are some amendments that were made. The tax reporting requirement within the bill expanded the definition of a broker for the IRS purposes. And this bill will require all brokers to report transactions under the current tax code. The bill mandates that a broker will have to report any digital asset transfer move to the account of an unknown person or address. The new rules tend to put tremendous emphasis on a broker's know your customer and tax information reporting systems. The bill also expands on a section of the US tax code where people who received more than $10,000 in cash or cash equivalent will have to report a f will have to report to the IRS. They will also need to verify the identity of the sender, include their social security number, the nature of the transaction, and other information. The proposal has received pushback from industry groups, such as the Chamber of Digital Commerce, saying that the current text is too broad and vague, with the potential to define other businesses in the digital currency sector as brokers. These groups worry that the reporting rules may hurt companies without the ability to comply. I want to quickly show you the new definition of a broker that they are using because it is so broad that almost includes everybody that performs a cryptocurrency transaction. So they changed the definition of a broker. Here they say any person who for consideration is responsible for regularly providing any service, effectuating transfer of digital assets on behalf of another person. They also define digital assets as any digital representation of value which is recorded on a cryptographically secure distributed ledger or any similar technology as specified by the secretary. So here's the issue. The current definition of broker may allow the IRS to target crypto miners, developers, and others who could be considered brokers, even if they don't have any customers or have access to information needed to comply with the reporting tax requirements. The industry worries that it will discourage innovation in the cryptocurrency sector. And to be honest, I'm not even sure how will this work because all the nature of blockchain is decentralization. And for example, if every single cryptocurrency transaction goes under this rule, what will happen with people who mine Bitcoin? 
According to this article from Ernst and Young, there are two forms you need to be aware of. The first form is a 1099B. Here they explain cryptocurrency and other digital assets sold by customers of brokers would be subject to form 1099-B. This form required digital assets to be treated as cash when received in the course of a trade or business. The other form is a 60501. Here they explain that the bill would modify the IRC section to treat digital assets as cash, which requires persons engaged in a trade or business to report to the IRS on Form 8300, report of cash payments over $10,000 received in a trade or business. Here's the issue. The problem is that these two forms ask for a lot of personal information from the counterpart. And if you're doing a cryptocurrency transaction, most probably you will not have access to all the information that these forms are requiring. For example, this form 1099B asks for the payer's name, street address, city, town, and also asks for the payer's TIN. This form 1099B is the, the form that you fill from the proceeds from broker and barter exchange transactions. This other form, which is the 8300, is the report of cash payments over $10,000 received in a trade or business. And it also requires a lot of information from the, from the counterpart. For example, here where they say identity, of individual from whom the cash was received, you have to put first name, last name, uh, tax identification number, address, city. If you perform a cryptocurrency transaction, you will not have the access to all this information. So what are the alternatives to this? People are proposing to make the definition of broker a little bit less broad. For example, if the broker definition could make clear that these requirements do not apply to cryptocurrency miners or sellers of hardware and software wallets, this may also help with the concerns. Also, creating a new form from the IRS more specific to cryptocurrencies because if they are treating cryptos as cash and you know you receive cash from somebody, you probably know that person. However, in cryptos, we don't have that case. So you cannot ask people to fill up a form that, that it was designed for cash. So how does this affect you? More than ever, the government is putting emphasis on keeping track of cryptocurrency transactions. And it is not clear the term broker will include miners and how it will affect NFT transactions. But let's say, for example, if the investor were to send $100,000 worth of Bitcoin from their self-custody wallet to their Coinbase account. Here's another issue that presents itself. Coinbase will be required to issue a 1099 saying that the investor sold $100,000. The problem is that Coinbase will not know how much the investor initially paid for the Bitcoin because it did not happen on their exchange. So let's say that you bought crypto so let's say that you bought Bitcoin in another exchange at $3,000 in 2019. But now you want to sell it at $58,000 on Coinbase. Coinbase does not know how much you bought that Bitcoin for, but they still need to issue a 1099. This can create potential issues like an overstated 1099. So in case of this happening, you need to talk to an accountant or use a tool to reconcile the report that they're sending with the right amount. The best thing you can do is to keep track of your cost basis because you need to know what you originally pay for your crypto as accurately as possible. So you will be able to reconcile with what the exchanges are reporting to the IRS. If you own a significant amount of cryptocurrency assets, it may be a good idea to hire an accountant or manually reconcile using tools like Cointracker.io. I find really interesting that the government is estimating that the enhanced reporting requirements will help bring an additional $28 billion in revenue. I'm not sure how they came up with that number, but that's what they are estimating. The good thing is that these provisions will not take place until 2024. And that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much. If you guys got any value from this video, I will highly appreciate if you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next video.